Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. What do you do when you're feeling unmotivated with your photography? How do you get back the spark? How do you find your direction again? So these are questions that I was asked recently by some other photographers, and they're also questions that I have asked myself many times throughout my career. And there's always been uh, one thing that seems to kind of relight the fire and get me back on track, and that is change. So uh, today in this video, I wanna talk about change, the importance of it, and why it can be a necessity at times. And I wanna share what that's looked like for me and more specifically uh, look at and talk about two photo books that have played a big role in shifting my direction. So both of these books are by Stephen Shore, who's at the top of my list personally for all time favorites. Um, ignore the papers in these, these are just to mark some images we're gonna check out. Uh, but they definitely share some similarities, but also quite a few differences, including the gap between the two in terms of when they were released. So the first book is titled Uncommon Places. Sure, a lot of you are familiar with this one. And this is a body of work that was made over a five-year period in the 70s during a number of road trips across the US and Canada. And Uncommon Places is a collection of mostly large format color work, eight by 10 to be exact, and focuses on the everyday, sometimes mundane scenes that surround all of us, revealing structure and detail that often goes unnoticed. And the images to me are incredibly captivating. So Uncommon Places, this is actually, I would say like the first photo book I ever purchased when I was making some changes. And to, to this day, it's still an absolute favorite. Every time I look at this thing, I'm still inspired by the work in here. And you know, this came at a time for me where I'd been doing like traditional landscape work uh, for a really long period of time, like 10, 11 years. And there was this two year period I went through where I was just feeling incredibly unfulfilled. Uh, and burnt out. And I can't even remember how I first came across this. It was probably, you know, getting back into film and just being introduced to like some new artists and like a genre that I, I really knew nothing about. But the first time I saw these images, I was completely captivated by them uh, for numerous reasons. But one is just the fact that it was such a departure from anything that I had done in the past. And all of a sudden, you know, I see this work that is consuming me and that I'm so attracted to, but is basically of these like everyday scenes that, you know, surround all of us or would have surrounded all of us back in the day, but are just so revealing. You know, Shore's attentiveness to these surroundings and the way he organizes things make you just see details that you maybe wouldn't necessarily notice. And it's almost just like organizing the chaos in a really pleasing way. So a couple things I wanna talk about specifically as we'll look at some images here. But the first one is just his approach to composition and how he goes and organizes these scenes. So again, attentiveness, I'll probably say that word a lot throughout this video, but as you look at these images, you just see like how precise and thoughtful the placement is, of all of these elements, you know, right down to even like the, lamp post back here with the light and you know how it fits in here beside the tree at the corner of the frame just where signs uh, kind of enter where things are cut off how he includes things where he basically decides to end the frame but even like the decisive moment you know with the movement the things that are moving through the frame the cars when he's tripping the shutter uh, this frame, you know, another one, I love how you have this uh, telephone or a power pole that runs straight down here and it's splitting this truck perfectly in half. You know, the placement here, you almost have like equal distance between these headlights. Same with the taillights here, just, you know, nothing being cut off where they're placed in the frame. So you can just picture him working with the view camera and really taking that time uh, to fit everything in exactly where he wants it. Even, you know, the moment with this car passing in the background at the end of the alley. So absolutely love this, even to this day, you know, and when I first saw this work, it, it was just this really strong reminder that, you know, there's things waiting to be found everywhere in the ordinary, uh, in the scenes that surround us, in our neighborhoods, if you just stop and look a little bit closer. So it's uh, such a switch from seeking out like this dramatic loud images to now just seeing the natural environment or the normal environment in such a different way. So. You know, this one as well, I love how this farm building here is placed kind of perfectly in between uh, these two lampposts or power poles. 
And then even these buildings, you know, one on either side, very similar in shape and size, and they just balance each other out perfect. Um, yeah, love his approach to this stuff. Just again, taking the ordinary everyday scene and really breaking down all the little details uh, and organizing things just in this really kind of pleasing fashion. Uh, you know, this frame as well, this is the classic cover shot for Uncommon Places. This is one of my favorites. I love when you look at this frame. It seems like it was almost staged. Everything just fits so perfectly, even down to these details like this Volkswagen van that's, you know, under this overhang here in the background. Love this kind of chain fence here, the way that flows through the foreground. Again, you know, where he's choosing to kind of end his frame, what he's cutting through. It all just feels uh, so right. So I could go on about composition for a long time. Uh, I, I've certainly been inspired and learned a lot, but uh, the second thing I wanna talk about is just his approach to color. And again, you know, this word attentiveness, coming back to this, it's so fitting for his use of color as well, because you just look at these frames and you can tell that there were very deliberate decisions made in terms of um, which scenes he would focus on based on the color that was in them. So a lot of complementary colors, a lot of primary stuff. Also, this book is uh, paired and sequenced brilliantly, as we'll see here. But uh, this, for example, you know, I love the scenes kind of dominated with these yellows, but then it's, uh, you know, complemented by these blues here in the painting on the wall. And then paired up with this image where you have like the blue sky, the blue department store, and even down to like the majority of the cars in this scene are blue and then you have a couple gold and yellow ones. So just an incredible ability to, uh, like, or awareness to, to find these scenes. Even in, like, more subtle situations as well. So this is another one, you know, I love how this is, like, mostly cream or really pale yellow, but then you have these little blue accents throughout the frame. And that's it. There's no, like, bold color anywhere that's distracting and, and taking away from it. Uh, both of these, especially, I love this pair, but, you know, the the clothing on the bed here, primaries, you have red, green, blue, and then same thing in this frame, obviously dominated more by red, but the blue car and the green throughout. And even scenes like this, you know, simple, simple stuff, this yellow tablecloth with the blue puzzle, visually just so nice to look at. And then again, more of the same here, you know, you can notice right away blues and yellows, even with this one, you know, down again to these little details, you obviously have the blue sky, kind of the yellow building, but the cars in here, it's like a yellow car, yellow uh, Volkswagen down here. So this was really the first photography that I'd come across in a long time, or since I begun, that really inspired me to try something different. And uh, it's, for me, what brought back a lot of creative energy and interest in photography again, and was just a huge reminder that sometimes change is necessary uh, and that things just run their course and it's time to move on. And you see this a lot as you start to learn more about specific photographers' journeys and their histories. Even Shore, before Uncommon Places, was working uh, with a 35 millimeter camera and he went to large format because he wanted to print bigger, he even tried shooting it handheld at first, which didn't work. So he went to a tripod and he talks about how that really changed his approach to how he captured from there on out. Okay, so next we're gonna take a look at the second book. Just have to quickly talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. So if you've been wanting to build a website for your work, Squarespace is a great platform to do just that. What I've come to love about them is just the ease of use and the quality of templates. You can set up a portfolio in minutes without any previous experience choosing from a wide range of clean and stylish designs that are customizable with endless design options and also just really simple features like clicking and dragging to reorder gallery images, which is something that I absolutely love. You can also set up a shop to sell prints, books, zines, and other things like that. So check out squarespace.com today for a free trial, test it out, uh, and when you're ready to launch, you can use my link below to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So book number two is titled Topographies, Aerial Surveys of the American Landscape. And if Uncommon Places is at number one for me, this book is quickly, at the moment, becoming number two. 
So Topographies is a collection of work made over a two year period during the COVID pandemic. And just like with Uncommon Places, Shore traveled across the United States, exploring cities, towns, and back roads. And although this work is still reminiscent of the images that are in Uncommon Places, when it comes to uh, vision, the tool of choice couldn't be more different. So rather than an eight x 10 camera for topographies, Shure chose to use a rather affordable consumer drone by DJI, I believe a Mavic 2 Pro to be exact. So when I first uh, saw this work and when this book was released, I was definitely uh, caught off guard. And that's because like when I picture Stephen Shore's work, I picture him, you know, these very like methodical images using a large format camera. I don't picture Stephen Shore using a drone just because of that, especially not like a consumer, for the most part, affordable DJI Mavic Pro. This book is such a huge reminder about like the tools available to all of us and especially nowadays how we're almost spoiled and a lot of things are good enough. And we might not be taking advantage of things that could bring like a really unique uh, angle to our work or give us an opportunity to do something that we couldn't in the past just because we might not think they're good enough. So uh, we'll take a look at some of this work. I'm absolutely in love with this stuff uh, right now. And there's gonna be definitely some themes with uncommon places because he's still photographing these like ordinary scenes but he's using this different tool to see the environment to see the landscape in a very different way you know just exploring like uh, contrasts and things that complement one another and also just details and patterns and all these different things so uh, this first image right here is one that i absolutely love it's one of the first in the book but just you know how you have this river at the bottom flowing through here with this road and then the rock fall. But then as you start to look closer at these images, you start to notice details. So for example, uh, down here on the rock, there's just this one person sitting here with their legs in the water. And even as I look at this now, you know, every time I see something different, I didn't even notice this person beside them who's uh, sunbathing on the rock. You have their towels up here. So just this amazing opportunity to see the landscape in a very different way. Uh, this image, for example, you know, you have this farm or, or this homestead, whatever you want to call it. I uh, just have this one horse here, uh, another one up here, this white one on the edge of the frame, but even just these other things, like there's this uh, polka dot ball here that's sitting there and the way that the, the uh, road runs in. And then this image uh, specifically, you know, I really like this one. You have this uh, football or, or soccer pitch up here, which is just kind of flanked and uh, contrasted by this graveyard here. Same with this one. Absolutely love this, you know, showing kind of the human impact on the landscape here, just at like the bottom third of the frame or, or half of the frame. And then you have this city and town in the background. So just Immediately when I started looking at this work, it was just cool to see uh, him embracing this tool that's allowing him to look at the environment in a different way. But it's not like, you know, when I think of drones, I think of loud again, you know, FPV stuff flying through things, epic landscapes, you know, overdone video footage. And, and I've owned drones in the past. I own a drone right now. And I never thought about it just being this tool with a camera attached that could allow you to to photograph things in this very like uh, tasteful way. Again, these ordinary scenes where you're revealing a lot that you would otherwise miss. This image here is probably one of my favorites in the entire book. Uh, absolutely love this. So, you know, you have that shadows coming off of the street signs here, this perfect moment with the truck coming through the intersection. And then I love the pickle barrel up here with the two people eating. This is one of my favorites for sure. And then this scene, again, you know, just that like decisive moment, even with these aerial shots, you see here with the cars, you know, the placement of them when he's tripping the shutter, this one's coming around the corner. There's just so much happening in all of these frames. I um, mean, then beyond that too, I love how from up here, you can see like the wear marks on the road from the rubber of the cars. So interesting, obviously the lines as well and the different shapes. This one as well, you know, these aren't like these massively elevated aerial shots where you're like a thousand feet in the air. Obviously there, there's limitations. You have like the focal point of this like local shop here, the road leading into the distance. 
Love these ones as well, where it's like a little bit closer playing with uh, almost like uh, different shapes, and like an abstract look to it. But again, contrast, you have this vehicle graveyard here with the, uh, I'm assuming it's the landowner's house over here. And what's really neat is with all the images as, as well, there's uh, like the coordinates, the exact specific coordinates of like location and height, which I think is a really nice add. And I will say the quality of this, to me, it looks incredible. Whoever did the prep work and whoever processed the images, I don't know if uh, Shore is doing that himself, uh, but coming from like, I think that's a one inch sensor, it looks amazing. But again, for a book, you know, it's still like a 20 megapixel camera, I think. And for a book, it looks fine. Uh, I've read an interview with Shore, or I think it's actually in the book itself where he talks, there was a limit printing big of like 27 inches, but for this and a 27 inch print's pretty big, but especially for a book, again, you know, the, the tools we have available to us nowadays are more than capable when you use them in the right way. So I think the quality of these images looks great. This is another favorite as well. Really enjoy how, you know, the bottom half of the frame is this uh, vehicle graveyard. And then you have the town up here and the whole frame split in half by the freeway. It's just such a cool contrast. And then even stuff like this, you know, just using it for a little bit of an elevated viewpoint, not worrying about getting incredibly high up. And this is like, you know, similar to back in the day, people would often use uh, like ladders with large format, still do nowadays, obviously, to get a, a little bit of a, a unique vantage point, but even just using the drone to not go 500 feet in the air, but just to switch things up a little bit. And then this frame here, this is probably one of my favorites as well from the book. I absolutely love, you know, the elements in this. You have the hill here uh, as like a focal point in the frame, but then you have the rest of the town, the street running through, all this other stuff. So this has been a huge reminder to me to like not get too married to the specific tools that you're using and more so kind of look at what's available out there and what it can do for you without worrying too much about exactly what it is. And I think this can happen at times where like you might uh, see a certain camera that's like popular or a certain format and think that that's how you want to work, but it might actually just not be a fit for what you're doing. So I love the fact that Shore goes and buys this like thousand dollar kind of consumer drone and goes and makes a complete body of work. The tool is incredibly capable for what he needs it to do. And uh, the resulting images, I think, are pretty amazing. So this has been a huge inspiration for me recently. Again, just uh, reminding me not to be too rigid, but specifically this drone work, because as I said, I've been doing a bunch of work up in North Wales. And there have been these moments there where, you know, you're in these environments where there's such a human impact on them uh, and it's overwhelming in person, but trying to translate that standing on the ground with a large format camera, sometimes just isn't possible. This has got me thinking now, like what are the possibilities uh, with a different vantage point? And is this something that could help me translate uh, this feeling to an audience, something that I haven't been able to do in some situations with a large format camera? Okay, so that wraps this one up. Hope this was some food for thought. And I also just wanna say, you know, I'm not suggesting you should go and make changes purely for the sake of it, but more so just want this to be a reminder that um, I don't think we're supposed to stay static and that embracing new tools and interests and directions uh, can be a good thing, especially if you've been struggling with uh, something that you've been doing for quite a long time. So uh, anyways, hope you enjoyed this. Would love to hear from you if there's been any like specific work or books or projects that you've come across that have really inspired a new direction. Um, other than that, I'll link to both of these below. Uh, worth checking both of them out, but if you're a Shore fan and you have Uncommon Places, I've really enjoyed topographies. This has been a great one. Other than that, uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you soon.